SZS, service and research for the visually impaired students. We're here in the study center for the visually impaired students, or SZS, at the University of Karlsruhe. The study center arose in 1987 from a pilot project, Informatics for the Blind, which was aimed at opening up educational and occupational fields to the blind and partially sighted that have been and are typically closed to them. This means subjects like mathematics, as well as natural and economic sciences and engineering, or fields of study that are substantially based upon mathematics and diagrams. There are few universities like the Karlsruhe Institute for Technology where blind and partially sighted students enjoy so much support. Support so that they can complete their studies as independently as possible. This is primarily due to the study center's more than 20 years of activity for the visually impaired students at the University of Karlsruhe. Work at SZS can be characterized into three pillars. The first pillar is the transition from school to university life. The second pillar is academics, with the primary task being to provide the blind and partially sighted students with academic literature in an adequate form, as a rule in electronic form. The third pillar is the transition into professional life. Here we are concerned with building bridges with industry and potential employers in order to help support the integration into working life. First pillar, preparation for academic studies. The orientation phase is at the core of SZS's work in the first pillar, the preparation for academic studies. Once a year, SZS invites visually impaired pupils and their families from all over Germany in order to inform them about all possible issues regarding a higher education. The purpose of the invitation is not only the work at SZS in Karlsruhe, but rather to discuss all possible situational aspects for students, regardless of university or city. Of course, what's terrific is that you'll meet other students without visual disabilities, because collaborative work is an important aspect. First-hand accounts and tips from current students are an important part of the orientation phase. What you'll experience is that students are uncertain how to act around you. You have to be proactive and let people know what their options are, because most don't have any experience with blind people. During the orientation phase, evening events allow for an informal exchange. The participants socialize over pints in a pub and current students recount their special university experiences to the pupils. In order to foster this exchange, attending parents must, in the truest sense of the word, make way. For many, this is an unfamiliar experience up until now, one that signifies letting go as the university process begins. I would kindly ask all parents to please sit over here at this table. Yes, a so-called table for parents because I believe this is a tremendous opportunity for the students to exchange information amongst themselves. Okay, so you're saying that I'm to start when traffic on my left behind me from the Waldhornstrasse approaches. Yes, exactly. It's an inhibiting approaching traffic, and it will be green here for pedestrians when they start. The Zewerk Reha team, in cooperation with SZS, offers mobility training on campus and within the city to new blind and partially sighted students in Karlsruhe. There are particular pitfalls on campus, which one needs to know about. For example, signs at face level. Open staircases are a big problem, and the multitude of bicycles on campus. You have to learn how to react accordingly in order to cope. 
äh, um damit zurechtzukommen. Second Pillar – Academic Support Special devices are used in everyday student life in order to depict words, formulas and graphs. Blind students work mainly with synthesized voice or refreshable braille display, which transmit text output on a display into braille. I'm working here with a braille display. Each module on this display has eight dots, and these eight dots represent one letter on the screen. I have here as an example an exam, which I'm going to take. Here are the questions. I can alternate between questions, which are always depicted on my display. I don't use synthesized voice for this at all, only my braille display down here, where I can feel what's written. Others may do it differently. They may use synthesized voice a lot more. It's very individualistic and differs from person to person. SZS employees are engaged so that visually impaired students at the University of Karlsruhe can use these technical aids. SZS's core business is actually making literature accessible for visually impaired students. Students come to see me and tell me which courses they're taking and what material they need outlines or lecture notes, books, slides or transparencies, which then must be made accessible. I delegate these tasks to student assistants who then convert the documents into accessible documents. This means in digital form, and then they are given to the students. Publishing houses oftentimes provide standard literary works, which are then processed by SZS employees so that blind students can work with them using synthesized voice or refreshable braille displays. I need a book for one of our blind students in electronic form. Mathematical formulas are linearized so that they can be read using a braille display. SZS teaching assistants input descriptions of graphs or print them if the graph is particularly complex using a special tactile printer, the Tiger printer, so that they are palpable. Of course, the computer technology significantly simplifies the entire process. Now everything is digital. In the past, everything was drawn by hand and Braille was glued to it, as you see here. SZS employees also convert student exams into an accessible form. Lecturers bring the exam questions to SZS where text and graphics are prepared. If you simply place a small reference line here on the left and on the right so that a blind person can orientate himself just a bit better. SZS employee Gerhard Javarek, who is himself blind, checks the conversion. He suggests to colleagues ways how one might make this illustration of a foreign trade triangle more readable. Thereafter, he then prints a new version with the Tiger printer. At the bottom of the totem pole is the economic student, Malte Oehlmann, who must ponder the converted graph. I have here, for example, a tactile graph which depicts the basic foreign trade model. In this case, I would touch the graph like this. I have here a coordinate system, and first I would feel along the X and Y axis, and then go through the graph, curve for curve, in order to get an idea of the complete graph. In addition, I may also have, oh, there are only numbers and letter abbreviations. The legend is in the computer, and I can read it on my Braille display. So I think I'm going to take the exam now and I need a little bit of quiet. There are many modern screen reading devices for partially sighted students at SZS. With these devices, text, graphs, formulas and the like can be enlarged and presented differently depending upon the visual impairment. Special resolutions for computer displays also assist in making text files and web pages more readable. Alexander Kunz is in his 10th semester studying physics. 
His severe visual handicap is hardly an impairment in his everyday student life, also thanks to the assistance of SZS. Alex explains to a fellow student the coupled pendulums experiment. Alex also enjoys experimenting in his free time, more exciting things than the coupled pendulums. In his hometown in Russia, Alex ventures a tandem skydive. Even though not quite as exciting, the University of Karlsruhe's fitness center is also naturally open to visually impaired students. Luis Kovash, who was awarded a PhD in philosophy at Karlsruhe and who has even to this day remained loyal to his university as an assistant professor, regularly takes advantage of the fitness studio together with his wife, Aline. 876, 930. Even if he is not quite so precise with regard to his athletic ambitions. That's enough. Partially sighted students use portable camera systems to assist them in seminars. Naturally, blind students must attend the same courses and seminars as their fellow sighted students. If visual teaching aids such as PowerPoint presentations are used, then they are to a considerably greater extent dependent on their sense of hearing than sighted students. Thus, bad acoustics, or an often prevailing noise level in lecture halls, can quickly turn into a problem. At an early stage, it's important to introduce yourself to the professor so as to try and prevent things like, we're going to change this here and here, and then merely point to the respective position, which can occur in lectures where the emphasis is on mathematical equations. SZS does not only assist and support visually impaired students technically. Staff try and help with all problems arising, either from studying or everyday life. This is always a problem. A sighted architect also has difficulties finding a job. Once a month, students and SZS staff meet to discuss their experiences, pending problems and new information. We had the topic that he's going to be a father. Hello, Lucas. Hi, Lucas. This is terrific. This is unbelievable. We've never done this before. It's the first time. Even Lucas Smirek is attending the meeting via the internet today. He is spending a semester abroad in San Francisco. What's the weather like for you guys over there? Terrible, as always in San Francisco. We have to continue. Bye. Take care. At an early stage, students should contact their lecturers directly in order to clarify special support measures within the context of courses or special conditions with regard to examinations and tests. As an example, how much time do I have? You start the exam at SZS at your leisure. You don't need to maintain the three-hour time constraint. You can have four hours or more if you need it. Lecturers often report that their contact with blind and partially sighted students is a significant experience they are transformed from being teachers to students themselves. Blind students have provoked me to discreetly rethink the entire process, the didactic, the lecture. In this respect, one is enriched because one is practically forced to rethink several things. The kind of things that one has always taken for granted, but not anymore. And you say, OK, it has to be done this way, and in doing so, you learn something new. And it's always good when one learns something new.